All right. Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday local time here in California, 1056 a.m. May 14, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a little 0.7, not a 7 magnitude, but uh, just under the 1.0 magnitude level there. Looks like across the Bay Area in Northern California. Uh, covering space weather activity here real quick, we had another X flare late last night. Uh, not from the departing sunspot out there on the western limb, but from a new area out here on the uh, northeastern limb. This area will rotate further into view in the Earth-directed view, uh, as it is trying to right now. It'll be more centered in a few days here, but uh, decent sized X flare from this sunspot region back here. Uh, that was an X 2.7, I believe. Let me double check that and see what we had for maximum level. Right up here, X 2.7. Decent size X flare, and uh, looks like things are starting to ramp up here in the last 24 hours. So, a lot of movement uh, coming from, from the sunspot over here. Sunspot number 4087. That's the culprit here of the X flare and a more recent M flare. Now, notice this X flare here. That's from. Uh, yesterday, but off of a sunspot that is no longer visible there on the western limb, so that will um, be we won't have to worry about that. So we'll continue to watch 4087 here. It does look like it's starting to get another magnetically complex area back here within the center portion of that core. That uh, is what you want to see for magnetic complexity there. Uh, the 2.7 X 2.7 matches. Well, I think it's number 15 or 16 here on the top flare chart. Uh, here's here it is, May 14, 2025. 2.7 X 2.7. So number 16, and uh, we are starting to go down here in terms of solar maximum. We reached the peak here. Oh, NASA said it was sometime the end of last year. Uh, we'll still continue to see active conditions out here uh, until we set, until we head into solar minimum, which will take place here in a few years. But uh, things uh, will remain somewhat active. So far for uh, solar cycle 25, even uh, during the peak of the maximum here, the largest flare is an X 9.0. That was from uh, October of last year. And this is actually somewhat minimal. We, we can actually get bigger ones than this, but uh, so far we have yet to see it. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see anything uh, above that level, but uh, the flares are continuing from this newer sunspot, 4087. So I raised up the flare threat. 30% chance is probably a decent number. 75% chance there for M flare as well. This is from the SolarHam.com site. Uh, we'll watch that closely because we got this, uh, got it expanding out there. It's about the only area right now of interest in terms of solar flaring. Not a whole lot of protons uh, were shot off from that uh, flare last night or this morning. Uh, looks like we're still just recovering a little bit from that M flare recently. And that in itself there, what was that M flare? Very close to, uh, to an X flare class again, M7.7. So things are ramping up out here on the sun. And with the sunspot starting to grow a little bit, 4087 it will remain a threat uh, for some stronger flaring as uh, it continues to evolve and uh, get more into an Earth-directed view. Now, no major changes there to the Aurora forecast. We really haven't had anything Earth-directed in terms of CME activity. Uh, once this coronal hole here, and this is uh, number 48, I don't know, it looks like it's starting to... Uh, close in a little bit but might see some aurora amplifications once this is in earth directed view pinning it stays like this uh, allowing some high speed solar wind stream to flow uh, in the earth directed view but uh, we got uh, we do have a couple days here before it's even into that position and then another couple days uh, for the arrival of this high speed solar wind stream but for now watch that area out there on the northeastern uh, quadrant of the sun or as earthquake activity goes, let's take a look, see what we got here in the last 24 hours. Uh, the largest magnitude here is going to go to a 6.4 out here around the Tonga area. That was from yesterday. So far today, uh, after midnight anyway, the largest quake going to be a 5.2 down across the Pacific Antarctica Ridge. 
A little bit of movement here happening across the southern end of the globe, putting New Zealand in a prime spot here for some movement. Now, uh, there was a little bit of activity there with a three-pointer just after, well, almost 2 o'clock here, local time, California time, 3.6, six miles deep. I'm uh, surprised they're reporting that earthquake. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Most of the time, it's just a uh, uh, 4.0 and above for the international community. So keep an eye there on New Zealand. It uh, Again, it's kind of out there on the plate boundary there where we could see some activity stir up here soon with a, a lot of movement happening around it. All right, let's check the states out here, see what we got going on across the west coast. A little bit of movement out here in the uh, Gorda Ridges. That looks like it's at the extreme southern or southeastern end of the Blanco Fracture Zone. Uh, it's a little strike slip boundary here that transforms into a, uh, well, this area transforms into a divergent boundary zone. A spreading seafloor center. Notice the ridges there on either side of that plate boundary. That further pushes the small Gorda plate here underneath the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. And that's where we've seen a, a lot of the trimmer activity taking place out here in the last week. So a little bit of movement amplifying out there across this region today. Uh, up into the Pacific Northwest. A couple of smaller earthquakes there from yesterday. I want to show you guys a trimmer map here. Make sure I got the most recent updated imagery. Uh, this is from yesterday, 371 epicenters of trimmer, mainly again here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. A little bit up north here, but most of the activity has been uh, uh, really ramping up down south here. If we look at the, well, I guess there's been a little bit here in the last 30 days, but most of it's ramped up here in the last week. Uh, total tally, 4,241 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, a pretty good cluster down here across the southern end. And when things are amplifying like this down into the subduction zone, the slow slip events, that means that the plates are on the move and that strain is continuously building up there um, even further across the locked area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, so just something I'm kind of watching here. No telling when it's going to happen in terms of larger activity, whether it's going to be a full rupture of the Cascadia or maybe even just a partial rupture here for Northern California. That uh, could be easily a, a mega quake area up to 8.4 or so across the southern end. Uh, the Bay Area pretty quiet aside from the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. That's hydrothermal plants up there. And Southern California still a little spotty here. Uh, nothing above 2.5, just general small microquake activity from yesterday and today. Uh, one earthquake here in the last hour outside of Kalinga. Kalinga there, 1.5. Uh, looks like it might be... Oh, it's off the San Andreas Fault here. There's a couple different fault systems that run along these uh, foothills. But uh, nothing big happening out there for now. No unusual activity to note there across the southern portion of the state. Northern, uh, Northern Nevada out here, 4.1. Looks like a couple four shocks here prior to that 4.1. Stirring up about 5 o'clock in the morning just as folks getting up, uh, maybe ready to go to work, take the kids to school. That uh, interesting activity. If I recall, it's been an area of interest here in the last couple months. Some larger activity has been taking place out here. Um, I think we had a five-pointer out here, if I recall. But uh, a little bit of movement happening out there today. Very shallow, some shallow earthquake activity out there across Nevada. Nevada is obviously a seismically active state. Can see lots of earthquake activity out there for sure. There's many fault systems that run through the region. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing major going on. A couple smaller earthquakes out there. But uh, let's go double check that. Let's run over to the Yellowstone Seismograph Station view here. I'm already seeing it. A couple small earthquakes here around Purple Mountain, Madison River, uh, Mary Lake here picking up those two small, couple small quakes out there as well. But really nothing big going on in terms of any earthquake swarming. Uh, the rest of the country here, Texas and Oklahoma, uh, not really as active as what we had last week with a bunch of movement stirring up across the New Madrid seismic zone and the oil fields. Things uh, actually a little on the minimal side for now. Although we got one earthquake here in the New Madrid seismic zone. 1.2, about 5 o'clock this morning or so. Uh, but for now, just 
Again, very minimal conditions out there. All right, let's see what else we got here across the uh, global view. There's that earthquake from yesterday. A little bit of um, aftershock activity being reported around the region. That's going to be that six-pointer out in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, no further activity that I can see in terms of any unusual movement. One earthquake there off the coast of Italy. Looks like a three-pointer and a 2.5. Uh, let's see, Indian Ocean, a little bit of movement stirring up down there with a four-pointer, 4.9. Clustering going on here across the typical crunch zone and up around Japan. Still leaving, uh, looks like a 3.5 coming into the uh, Japan area right now. But still watching the Nankai Trough. It's a major subduction zone area there that's got uh, a lot of activity happening around it recently. And I know it's building up some momentum for a big quake. Same with the Curl Kamchatka up here. Looks like Iceland stirring up a little bit up there. Let's see, well north of the area of interest that I've been watching, the, the uh, Svart Singhi area down here. Uh, nothing, it uh, doesn't look like anything new happening, but uh, let's take a look real quick at the Iceland earthquake page here. There's a bunch of activity stirring up across this rift, rift zone. I would say a lot. Uh, not a whole lot happening elsewhere, though. Just minimal earthquake activity. All right, let's see. Anything else going on out here across the South America region? Starting to get a little quiet out there, it looks like. some Just minimal twos and threes down there across the Peru-Chile Trench. Taking a little break, it looks like, after uh, quite a bit of uptick down here recently. Most of the movement looks like it's happening up north now around the North American plate. Well, watch that. Even though California is somewhat quiet down there in Southern California, things could stir up because there's a lot of activity. It looks like momentum working its way up northward. Um, there's that 5.9 from yesterday. Middle America Trench fairly active as well with some fours and threes. Uh, so we'll just see what happens out here today. Kind of keep an eye on things. And again, space weather activity. It looks like we got uh, another flare kicking up right now. See, look at that. Going way up into the M flare category. Is this going to be another X flare event? Looks like it's from this active area back here again. Uh, the sunspot region that's produced the more recent larger X flare and uh, recent M flare. And another M flare, maybe an X flare. We'll have to watch that and see how far it goes up here. But goodness, 4087 is starting off with a bang. As soon as it makes its uh, debut out here across the uh, visible side of the sun, it's uh, throwing off flares left and right. So more than likely we'll uh, continue that trend. It does look like it's starting to grow a little bit from last night, 4087. Uh, 4087 shows that it's a beta structure but it's got some more structure on that uh, on it right now than it than they simplified B uh, category but it is growing uh, of course the, the more complex ones the beta gamma delta structure can uh, produce the stronger flares but it's well above a B right now just looking at that magnetic complexity back here so this is growing a bunch of independent cores all around it a couple areas back over here as well We are going up and up and up. I kind of want to see if it's going to top off or not. A little bit of curvature right here, so we may not make it into the X flare category, but uh, we'll check back on that here in just a second. I want to see what we got for any close approach asteroids while we wait for that. Well, that's a that is a huge asteroid, 330 foot building size asteroid coming in today. But uh, fortunately for us. Just about 4 million miles away. We definitely don't want anything like that big uh, hitting the planet. Everything else looks fairly safe. Look at this one. Over a thousand foot stadium size asteroid. That could do some, that could do some pretty big damage. <laughs> Goodness. That's, realistically, that's pretty close though. Uh, for that big of an asteroid, but still uh, fairly safe as far as a missed distance goes couple big ones on there today 
Uh, that's coming in, it looks like May 24th, been monitored since 2003. MH4. Yeah, we're, uh, we don't want that anywhere near us. Well, <laughs> that went pretty fast. All right, let me see what we got for the uh, flare right now. Yeah, it's starting to curve a little bit there. So I think it's just going to reach another roughly about an M flare category. Most of times, most of the time out here, it does not curve unless it's starting to die down. But uh, decent, another decent flare off of Sunspot. Uh, well, this area back over here looks, look at that, starting to get a, another bright feature there. 4087. All right. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, peaking out at about M4.6 or so. We'll continue to watch this, though, folks. It's, again, throwing off this area from yesterday. That's off of the sunspot that's now way out there on the western limb, out of sight, out of mind. But we've got one, two, three, four decent-sized flares here uh, from the current sunspot that's rotating into the Earth-directed view. 4087 here. Uh, I think it's going to be quite active. And uh, I don't believe it's thrown off any massive CMEs. This, this has just been a impulsive type event where, uh, you know, it shoots a, uh, a rapid large flare and that's it. But uh, always a likelihood here that it could throw off a decent CME during one of those events. So we'll continue to watch 4087 as it evolves in the... We'll rotate further into the Earth-directed view in the coming days. Stay safe. Uh, we'll provide further updates should they be uh, necessary out here in terms of uh, any larger flares. Have a good one. Enjoy your Wednesday. It's supposed to be a little warm out here in Northern California today. Towards the end of the week and this weekend, it's supposed to be up in the high 90s. Yay. Not really. <laughs> Not a big fan of the heat. Have a good one. We'll see you guys later.